Earth is the planet we live on, the third of eight planets in our solar system and the only known place in the universe to support life. But will it still be able to support life in one billion years from now? Throughout its long history, Earth has warmed and cooled time and again. Climate has changed when the planet received more or less sunlight due to subtle shifts in its orbit, as the atmosphere or surface changed or when the sun's energy varied. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the changes that are predicted to take place on Earth in a billion years from now. No one can ever say for sure what the future will bring, and it's highly unlikely that anyone will be around to see most of the changes to our Earth. But recent studies have shown that Earth will not be able to support and sustain life forever, and our oxygen-rich atmosphere may only last another billion years. Asteroid strikes, supernova blasts, and other calamities could take out humanity. But no matter what, a cataclysmic event one billion years from now will likely rob the planet of oxygen, wiping out life. Life is resilient. The first living things on Earth appeared as far back as 4 billion years ago, according to some scientists. At the time, our planet was still being pummeled by huge space rocks, but life persisted anyway. And throughout Earth's history, it's seen all manner of cataclysms. Desperate doomsdays, from supernova blasts and asteroid strikes to huge volcanic eruptions, and sudden climate shifts have killed countless life forms. And at times, those mass extinctions have even eliminated most species on Earth. Yet life has always rebounded. New species emerge and the cycle repeats. So what would it take to kill off life in full? Well, it turns out while humanity might be surprisingly fragile, it's not easy to sterilize an entire planet. But let's have a look at some of the possible doomsday events that could permanently extinguish all life on Earth, and the last is likely unavoidable. For the first two billion years of Earth's history, there was no oxygen in the air. That changed with the Great Oxidation Event, when low levels of oxygen first appeared. This has often been attributed to the evolution of photosynthetic bacteria that release oxygen as a waste product. Oxygen levels rose twice more, once between 800 and 540 million years ago, and again 450 to 400 million years ago. Previously, the oxidation levels were linked to major evolutionary shifts or tectonic activity, for instance. The final rise has been linked to the spread of land plants. However, there is no need to invoke any such dramatic events other than the initial evolution of photosynthetic bacteria. The behavior of the planet is enough to explain the stepwise rises in oxygen levels. The key is that Earth's mantle has been gradually cooling since the planet formed, and as it cools, it releases fewer volcanic gases such as carbon monoxide, which react with oxygen and remove it from the air. The initial Great Oxidation event came about because the oxygen from bacteria overwhelmed the volcanic gases in the air. Levels then held steady for millions of years because any extra oxygen reacted with minerals on land. The second rise happened because the extra oxygen changed the nature of phosphorus-containing materials, making them more likely to be buried in sediments. Phosphorus is a vital nutrient, so this change meant fewer organisms that would otherwise have taken in oxygen could survive, allowing more oxygen to escape into the air and into surface layers of the sea. The same process led to the third sharp rise in oxygen, when it reached the deep ocean. The same processes would play out on any planet that has oceans and continents, and where oxygen-releasing photosynthesis has evolved. However, one of Earth's great die-offs, an event called the Late Ordovician Mass Extinction, likely happened because the inverse took place. The planet saw a sudden drop in oxygen levels that lasted for several million years. During the Ordovician period, the continents were one jumbled mass called Gondwana. Most of life on Earth still lived in the oceans, but plants were beginning to emerge on land. Then, near the end of the Ordovician, a sweeping climate shift left the supercontinent covered with glaciers. That global cooling alone was enough to start killing off species. 80% of life on Earth died during that period. 
Even if a sudden spate of global cooling sparked the late Ordovician mass extinction, what set that in motion in the first place? Over the years, numerous astronomers have suggested the culprit might have been a gamma ray burst. These mysterious events that seem to be the most violent and energetic explosions in the cosmos have been tied to extreme supernova by scientists. However, we have luckily not seen a burst close enough to us to fully understand what's going on. If one did happen in the Milky Way, as has likely happened in the past, it could cause a mass extinction on Earth. It would wipe out the life forms that live in the upper levels of the ocean, which currently contribute significant amounts of oxygen to our atmosphere. They also break apart atmospheric oxygen and nitrogen. These gases get converted into nitrogen dioxide, which is more commonly known as the smog that blocks out the sun above heavily populated cities. Having this smog blanketing the entire Earth would block out sunshine and kickstart a global ice age. When a city-sized asteroid struck the Gulf of Mexico 66 million years ago, it was game over for the dinosaurs, as well as most other species on Earth at the time. And while our ancestors had not yet evolved, the impact was perhaps the single most important event in human history. Without the asteroid strike, dinosaurs might have continued to rule the Earth, leaving us mammals still cowering in the shadows. But what are the chances that our planet will ever be struck by an asteroid massive enough to wipe out all life on Earth? Simulations suggest it would take a truly gigantic space rock to accomplish such a feat. Killing all life on Earth would require an impact that literally boils away the oceans. Only asteroids like Pallas and Vesta, the solar system's largest, are big enough to do that. These days, collisions of such large objects are extremely unlikely. We can't forget global warming also playing its part in the unusually rapid increase in Earth's average surface temperature. Earth has experienced climate change in the past without help from humanity, but the current climatic warming is occurring much more rapidly than past warming events, primarily due to the greenhouse gases released by people burning fossil fuels. The global average temperature rose 0.6 degrees Celsius between 1906 and 2005, and the rate of temperature increase has nearly doubled in the last 50 years. Based on plausible emission scenarios, average surface temperatures could rise between 2 degrees centigrade and 6 degrees centigrade by the end of the 21st century. Some of this warming will occur even if future greenhouse gas emissions are reduced, because the Earth's system has not yet fully adjusted to the environmental changes we have already made. The impact of global warming is far greater than just increasing temperatures. Warming modifies rainfall patterns, amplifies coastal erosion, lengthens the growing season in some regions, melts ice caps and glaciers, and alters the ranges of some infectious diseases. Some of these changes are already occurring. Earth's temperature begins with the sun. Roughly 30% of incoming sunlight is reflected back into space by bright surfaces like clouds and ice. Of the remaining 70%, most is absorbed by the land and ocean, and the rest is absorbed by the atmosphere. The absorbed solar energy heats our planet. As the rocks, the air, and the seas warm, they radiate heat energy. From the surface, this energy travels into the atmosphere where much of it is absorbed by water vapor and long-lived greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane. When they absorb the energy radiating from Earth's surface, microscopic water or greenhouse gas molecules turn into tiny heaters like the bricks in a fireplace. They radiate heat even after the fire goes out. They radiate in all directions. The energy that radiates back toward Earth heats both the lower atmosphere and the surface, enhancing the heating they get from direct sunlight. This absorption and radiation of heat by the atmosphere is beneficial for life on Earth. Since the Industrial Revolution began in about 1750, carbon dioxide levels have increased nearly 38% as of 2009, and methane levels have increased 148% due to enhanced greenhouse effect. Any of these devastating scenarios, while undoubtedly terrible for life, are just a fraction as bad as future Earth's ultimate fate. Gamma ray bursts or not, in about a billion years, most life on Earth will eventually die anyway due to lack of oxygen. When you take a deep breath, the air expanding your chest is mostly nitrogen and oxygen, the chief components of our atmosphere. Oxygen exists in our atmosphere thanks to the exhalation of plants through the process of photosynthesis. 
A study released in March 2021 shows that, a billion years from now, as the sun heats up, plants will die off, taking with them the oxygen in our atmosphere that humans and animals need to breathe. Photosynthesis is a process used by plants and other organisms to convert light energy into chemical energy that, through cellular respiration, can later be released to fuel the organism's activities. Most plants, algae, and cyanobacteria perform photosynthesis. This process is largely responsible for producing and maintaining the oxygen content of the Earth's atmosphere, and supplies most of the energy necessary for life on Earth. Today, Earth's atmosphere is made up of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 0.9% argon, and 0.1% of other gases. Its oxygen-rich nature is ideal for large and complex organisms like humans that require the gas to survive. But early in Earth's history, oxygen levels were much lower, and they are likely to be low again in the distant future. Researchers say that Earth's atmosphere will maintain high levels of oxygen for the next billion years before dramatically returning to low levels reminiscent of those that existed prior to the Great Oxidation Event of 2.4 billion years ago. As our Sun ages, it's becoming more luminous, meaning that in the future Earth will receive more solar energy. The increased solar output will further warm the atmosphere, and the carbon dioxide will react to the increase in temperature by breaking down. Carbon dioxide levels will lower until photosynthesizing organisms, which rely on taking in carbon dioxide to live, just as we rely on oxygen to live, can no longer survive, removing the source of oxygen from Earth. This increased energy will also affect the surface of the planet, speeding up the weathering of silicate rocks such as basalt and granite. When these rocks weather, the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide is pulled out of the atmosphere and through chemical reactions locked in carbonate materials. This all means that not only a loss in the food chain, but crucially a loss in the air they produce and the air we breathe. The precise timing of when that starts and how long it takes is debatable. The deoxygenation process could take as few as 10,000 years, depending on a broad range of factors. But in the end, this cataclysm is an unavoidable one for the planet. Luckily, humanity still has another billion years to figure out other plans. What do you think our future generations can do to help prevent this outcome? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.